Welcome to the Shine Chat. I'm Mary Ellen Yolanis. I'm the telesales training manager here at Henry Shine. And today I'm joined with Dr. Faride Ramos, a double board certified functional and internal medicine provider care for the per patients in South Lando, Florida. Dr. Ramos, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Mary Ellen. Um, Dr. Ramos, the statistics are stating just last month, uh, a poll commissioned by the Alliance of Women's Health and Prevention revealed that nearly half of the American women are foregoing preventative care like checkups, screenings, and vaccinations. <clears throat> As a breast cancer survivor myself, I'm eager to hear um, the importance in, in this conversation about women's health. Dr. Ramos, in your experience, what are some of the biggest barriers? Is it time, fear, or access? Yes. Um, well, I, I'm truly a believer that it's um, many factors, and sometimes it can be a combination of all of those. Uh, some people, they find no time to come to the doctor and to do what they need to do in terms of a screening. Others, they unfortunately, they don't have access. Uh, and others, they just, they want to avoid knowing what can happen in the future if they develop any disease. So I, you know, the, the majority at this moment, I would say is more the time than anything that they don't maybe make priority. And that is obviously something that it's kind of sad because we always need to give priority with our health. There is nothing, uh, but there is a lot of, you know, teaching that we need to encourage patients to know that it doesn't really take a lot of our time to get to know what's going on with our body. So yeah, it's a combination of all of the above. So as providers, um, how critical it is to maintain a relationship with your patients and, and how do you go about doing that? Yes, very important, very key. Uh, anytime that a patient comes, you know, to have their preventative exam or if they come for any follow-up of medical conditions, I always encourage my patients to go over a screening to see what's going on, if they are up to date or not. And that is, uh, we as a provider, we are instruments. We are instruments that our patients need us in order to keep up with everything that they truly need to have in order to optimize their health. So I, again, I truly believe that we have uh, that power and our patients are the, the ones that at the end, obviously they will take the decision, but we are here to guide them to let them know that there is, uh, you know, these screening methods in order to avoid getting into an advanced disease or even to have any type of disease. And building that relationship that is so important, does your staff do anything also for inclusive of that? Yeah, so I always, um, you know, ask the staff if, you know, in the social media or myself, we can be more proactive, you know, tell the patients, you know, these right. are the different screening methods we can do in order to, let's say, for instance, prevent breast cancer. So I always try to take advantage of what's in the community and what people are following because now, you know, there are trends and social media is one of the big ones. So why not take advantage of that for our patients? And obviously, again, every time they come, uh, this even the staff, they ask questions, you know, when was your last mammogram? When was your last ultrasound? Whatever it's uh, related to the patient preventative care. So we have to, again, take control. And if it's many different checkpoints, that's even better for our patients. That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. I think the same thing if I hadn't had my early detection and my relationship with my physician, listening to them. Because I, I think a lot of times we go to the physician when we have a problem and then we ask what to do, mm -hmm. and then there's no patient follow-up with that, mm -hmm. right? They they right. didn't have the confidence in the doctor as they should have, and they went them to them for that reason. So I think that's really important, building that relationship. Exactly. Um, how can providers best communicate with their patients the importance and understanding the risk factors? and seeking preventative care? Yes, so risk factors, again, is uh, many different in terms of any cancer development. It's not just one factor. So that's when, again, we have to sit down with our patients. It's more than a patient and a physician relationship. It's more a friendship, to be honest, because that's when people and patients, they open up and they say, okay, yes, you know, I'm afraid of these or these are my fears because you know, I had, you know, my grandmother or my maternal aunt or whatever, you know, is the case. Uh, and that's when we have to really give them that uh, moment of teaching that is not about being fear, it's about take action now 
And that is going to make a difference in your life, pretty much in your life and your loved ones. Because obviously when there is cancer or any chronic conditions that can be impactful for the family members, that also will make you know, a difference if we catch it at an early stage. So that's where, you know, we definitely have to, have to sit down, take the time, because that's another thing. Physicians sometimes, you know, we're rushing in and out and we need to sometimes take a little extra time for those patients that they have fears and they don't know. So right. we need to do the learning point and for them to take that and be confident that whatever we're doing is for their best. And then I, I think one of the questions I'd like to ask you is, you know, as we're talking about early prevention, um, with trending technology, are there anything else that's out there that's maybe less invasive or, um, you know, easier for access for patients yes. in the technology world? Yeah. So we know, right, for many decades, we have had mammogram, we had ultrasounds, we have breast examination, but sometimes, again, some people, they complain, for instance, mammogram, oh no, it was too you know, traumatic for me, or if they have breast implants or they don't have the time and they don't want to go. So things in that nature. Fortunately, now we have technology. Uh, there is, uh, for instance, Celbria that it's specifically designed to check for any type of temperature changes. When there is anything growing, either uh, good or not, so benign or malignant, there is going to be new blood vessels. Those blood vessels, we have uh, the technology that it's going to change the temperature. So that's where Celbria comes. It's going to check if there is any new uh, development of whatever tumor, and that is going to check, and it's how we're going to see it. It's just thermic sensors. If it turns red, that's where there is a high likelihood of something developing. We cannot say for sure it's benign or if it's not benign, but at least we know that there is something growing. And that's when we can complement, because it's an adjunctive uh, type of um, diagnostic tool or a screening tool, I would say, I'm sorry, it's a screening tool to know what's happening in the breast tissue. So it's, it's a good way because it's also easy access. Uh, patients, they can come and either do it at you know, their uh, doctor's office, it's just 15 minutes, or they can you know, take it and do it at home. They just watch the video, how to place it. And it's very easy. It doesn't have any traumatic experience. And especially for younger populations that they might have more dense breasts, or if they have family history, first degree or second degree, and they want to take action, that's another way that we take advantage of, you know, this new technology. So it's complementing the, all the screening methods that we have and to lead in more towers. Okay, there is something growing, let's take action right now instead of just waiting for something to develop and is more advanced and obviously prognosis is worse. Can you use that? Um, also, you said about in breast implants. So a, a large population has breast yes. implants. Is this yes. something that, you know, you can use for breast implants as well as, you know, pre-screenings? Exactly. Yes. That The answer is yes. And that's, you know, again, talking about younger population or even, you know, uh, people that are more mature and they had that, that experience that they had uh, traumatic, um, you know, mammograms because it happens, unfortunately. Right not replacing in by any means any of the other screening methods, but is to know that there is there, that is available. And it's, again, it's easy, it's just 15 minutes. And yes, for uh, dense breasts, even for dense breasts, that is very common and a lot of mammograms, they cannot give us for sure because of the actual uh, mammary gland is too dense. They cannot say for sure, okay, there's something growing or not. So it's, it's super good because it's gonna complement what we cannot see uh, in a mammogram or an ultrasound. So it's, again, it's the technology we have to be, you know, obviously um, an instrument again for our patients to let them know that this is something that is happening, that is being approved, that it's easy, that is not traumatic, that, you know, we can do it from the comfort of your home or, or the office, doctor's office. Uh, and you can do it every six months, even every six months for patients that, you know, they want to skip mammograms. At least you are screening. You are not neglecting yourself. You know, that there is something that you can do and you can take advantage of that. Well, thank you, Dr. Ramos. I really appreciate you taking the time today and joining us. Um, it's really important to have discussions like this. I think, you know, women need to know yes. that there are things out there for them and preventative care is, is the best care. Exactly. So thank it you so much. Exactly. That's what I always say. Okay, Mary Ellen, thank you so much for inviting me. It was great meeting you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.